Earlier this year, we sped up to Wales to be the very first magazine to test the Saxdor 320 GTO. And behind me here is its successor. This is the Saxdor 320 GTC. Now, as you can see, the C stands for cabin and it has the full wheelhouse version. But there's something rather unusual about this. And let me show you what I mean. So, starting price, first of all, starts at around £120,000, including delivery and taxes to the UK. That's with a single 300 horsepower engine. This particular one here, fully specced up with the twin 225 engines and a lot of extras on it comes to about 190,000. But that unusual feature I was talking about is the wheelhouse, which because that is a full beam wheelhouse. Now what I mean by that is that it hasn't got the walk around decks that the open boat has. The wheelhouse comes all the way out to the edge of the boat. I say all the way, not quite, because there are in fact very slim side decks here. And if you look up on the roof, there is a handrail here, so you can just about shuffle along here if you want to. However, the big advantage is that you get a much more space inside the wheelhouse. So let's get on board and we can see more about what I mean. So first of all, while we're at the stern here, it's worth having a quick look under here because this is where you can stow a ski pole. This one hasn't got the ski pole fitted but it lives under there. You can have a full water sport ski pole. So you get a really nice tow for inflatables or wakeboarding. And then over on this side, there is a bathing platform. And it's really nice to see that actually they have improved the gauge, the thickness of the moldings here. And they're nice and solid and firm. The very early prototype I tested, there was a tiny bit of flex in here and that's not the case anymore. There are cleats right on the end. This makes it, very nice and easy to moor up. You can see this one's in use here and it keeps it well out of the way. Now coming through, these gates are new as well. They've upgraded those since the GTO that I tested earlier on. And it just, just again, looks a bit higher quality, a bit more substantial, lovely, chunky stainless steel, locks into place. Now same style bench you can see that this whole section swings over so that it can face aft which again I really like it's very nice when you're at anchor you don't really want to be facing into the boat staring at a glass door you want to be facing out over the back of it so very simple thing but it makes a big difference now there's a big teak table here you can see there's a folding out section obviously there's no seats on this side but you can very easily stow a couple of uh, director's chairs or some kind of folding chair that can slot in there and make full use of that now the other big feature and a standard one and one of the things that really grabs attention on this boat are of course the folding platforms so if i show you here this is these are the controls for them there's a lock button just to make sure that you don't accidentally press it. So if you push that and the starboard down button, you can see that platform starting to fold down. It's all electric. It just slides into place. And there we go. It is fully down now. And it's just such a nice, simple solution of feeling more in touch with the water, having more space in the cockpit, and particularly actually on this GTC, because the wheelhouse is there, it just means there's a bit more space, a bit more room to breathe. You don't feel quite so hemmed in. And you can see they have built little steps here, so you can get up to those side decks if you want. Now, the other thing they've changed is that instead of having a manual lock for when these terraces come up, there is now a little push button lock that just literally push, click, and it unlocks and goes down and when you pull it back up it automatically clicks into place so big sliding door obviously that is if you want to completely enclose it you can do that and during winter it just makes it much more usable more of an all-season all-weather boat now this is where you start to see the extra width you get by having that full beam wheelhouse there is plenty of space here. A lot of these walk around boats at this size, they can feel a bit cramped in the wheelhouse, but look at the extra width. There is room for one, two, three helm seats, and still there's a decent walkway down the middle. Now on the port side, there is a built-in wet bar. The wet bar unit itself is standard, but you will need to upgrade it if you want the sink. That's part of the 
uh, the, the fresh water pack, the fresh water pack that comes with the toilets. And on this one, they have fitted a Wallace diesel hob. You can have an all electric hob if you want to, but obviously that means you mean to be plugged into shore power. And by having a diesel hob and diesel heater, again, part of the same package, it means you can cook when you're out at sea without having to have electric shore power. There's useful storage under here. We're at a boat show, so it's obviously pretty busy at the moment, but lots of nice storage under there. And then over on the starboard side is the dinette table. Now, if I just temporarily move that, put that over here. Now you can see there's a big table here that unfolds and these helm seats swivel around to face it. So you can get a really nice sociable dining area that's all inside, all sheltered. You really can use it all year round. But you'll also notice that the table is set on an electric strut. And that is because this whole thing wears down. Might be able to demonstrate that. I think that's the button. So you can see it start to go down into place. I won't go the whole way, but you get the picture that this will drop all the way down to the same level as this seat. And then these suites swivel around and effectively it makes a convertible double bed. So you've got one really good double bed up here in the wheelhouse, as well as the cabin down below. But before we go down there, just want to show you a couple of other things. It's got two fridges on this one. There's one over here, slides out. And there is another one on this side. So two good fridges. I think at least one of those is optional. Now the seats themselves, they swivel around. I'm not going to do it one handed, but you can see there are nice knurled knobs here. So those swivel around to face onto that dinette some good bolsters. Quite an interesting material this. It looks fabric, but it feels a bit more vinyl. So it's probably nice and waterproof, not gonna stain, but it has that nice fabric look. Now the helm station, this has got the twin, the all glass bridge, twin touchscreen navigation system from Simrad, as well as access to all the boat systems. Very nice leather wrapped sax door wheel, twin mercury throttles for those big Ferrados at the back. This one is fitted with a bow thruster and the manual trim tabs. You can get automatic trim tabs, which is probably a good idea because it's a little bit confusing having those two joysticks. I can see how you might mix those up. Lots and lots of cup holders everywhere. Very nice LED lighting in them. Adds a bit of style. Again, LED lighting on the speakers, all very funky. Nice little armrest here. Now, the other thing to point out is because you haven't got those full side decks, there are sliding windows. These are in fact an option, quite an expensive one. They're four and a half thousand pounds, but they are really useful, partly for letting more ventilation into the boat, but also it means you can very easily access those mid cleats for put, putting your fenders out, attaching your lines, particularly if you're helming single-handed, that makes a big difference. Now then, there is a little footrest here. You can see that folds up and down, nice touch. And then the breaker panel, and these are all the controls. This is for the Wallace heating system, the diesel heating system, the Fusion Entertainment, the Wabasto heating. Those are all the breaker switches. And here you have got the controls for the roof. So again, this is all part of the standard fit and finish. We've got the roof open at the moment. So if I just press roof close, you can see that big electric roof starts to slide into place. And in fact, it is one touch, so I can leave that whirring away. It's actually a two-stage process, so it just stops at that point, and then you can press the button again and close it up completely. But really nice to see a full-length electric sunroof included as standard. And again, one touch open, press that again, leave that going. Now then, moving down into the cabin itself, now bear in mind this is a 32 foot walk around boat in the open and this one with the wheelhouse it's still got a remarkably decent cabin down here so there's a good it's a good sized bed running under the sunbed up on the foredeck we'll show you that in a minute and you can see there are a couple of hatches there so the cushions are on at the moment but if you take the cushions off that lets a load more light in here and also gives you sort of emergency access for getting in and out or dropping your bags through so this has got a mattress topper underneath, but you can see the size of the bed and that lifts up and gives access to the tanks. 
and you can see there's a couple of mattress springs on there it just all helps to get a bit more air under there it means it gets nicely ventilated doesn't get too hot and sweaty and this is the heads compartment it's not actually a bathroom it is literally just a heads there's no drain in the floor but it's got this clever solution with the door here that swings across and oh, locks into place just missed there so you can see it, it does create a private heads compartment that is separate it's not quite completely separate because you can see there is a bit of a gap up there it's more of a temporary cubicle but it does give you the privacy without stealing a whole load of space now there is a locker in there for getting some clothes in there it does mean you can actually carry enough stuff to make it a proper weekender there's a few ledges nice reading lights and it's actually rather nicely trimmed around here there's a nice bit of fabric adds a bit of luxury and that swings back open and there you can see the loo and I like the fact that it's tucked away under the seat it just means when it is open it looks a bit less like a bathroom and a toilet and a bit more like part of an open plan cabin nice detailing here glass basin folding tap a bit more storage the mirror with more storage behind there and the electric controls for the toilet now there is a little shower head under here I can I'm not, actually I can't do that one-handed but there is a shower under there but actually that's really just a bidet shower it's it's not a shower to actually wash yourself down with there is a shower on deck for that if you want to again access under there a bit more storage and then coming back out into the cabin you can see that this is the door that gives access to the foredeck so that is currently held in place there's a little clip that holds it there but that closes the whole wheelhouse off means it is completely sheltered in bad weather and then there's a push button pings open really substantial feeling door actually and that clips into place giving you access to the foredeck now coming out on the foredeck you can see these concealed rails it's a very nice solution rather than having up here can look a bit ugly and get in the way you've got these recessed hand grips here that take you all the way around onto the foredeck and here you have still got that walk around decks on this big sunbed here so technically the cushions are in fact an option but I can't imagine why you'd ever order one without it but you can also see these big overhead skylights here that let a lot of light down into that cabin again more cup holders and if we lift up the cushions you can see those hatches that let the light in down below now up at the forepeak there is an anchor locker in here now this has just got the manual anchor fitted but there is now an electric through hull anchor system that uh, goes straight through the peak there it runs out and it's on a sprung uh, sort of anchor platform that folds out and make sure that the anchor drops down without fouling that vertical bow so there is now a fully electric solution for that or you can just go for the manual anchor locker well just put that down and you can see here it just leads back up and you've got access to the water and the waste here and a similar side deck down there with the platform down so just show you through the roof here you can see how big that roof opening is and get a better feel for how it all fits together so this is the GCC version the very latest model in the Saxdor range like I said prices start at 120,000 with a single but in this spec with the twin 225s which seems to be much the most popular option and fully kitted out with everything you see here hundred and ninety thousand pounds so very interesting new addition to the range we're very much hoping to get our hands on one to sea trial the GTO that we tested earlier has exactly the same twin step hull nice deep V very confident stable handling so with any luck this will have all those same qualities should have good 50 to 55 knots performance with the big twins and everything you need but rather than being very much an open summer boat this is a closed all-weather variety so I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the 320 GTC we'll bring you a full sea trial as soon as we can but thank you very much for watching